Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, let's give it a couple more minutes and see if uh, more folks join the call. Right, I think we can get started. Uh, thanks, uh, Aki here for joining today. Uh, we're excited to be here and Thank listen you. to uh, the updates on user Netis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Yeah, I can see my screen. Yeah, yeah, we can. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I will talk about user energy uh, generation two. Uh, this was a significantly upgraded from uh, generation one, uh, which was uh, really incorporated in research, getting much attention in the community. But generation two is uh, significantly simplified by uh, running Kubernetes in Google Docker. So it's uh, similar to Kind, I mean, Kubernetes in Docker, and also Minikube with uh, Docker driver. But uh, user uh, supports marginal clusters. So uh, this is uh, the uh, overview of user analysis. So uh, it's a rootless Kubernetes distribution. So it doesn't need the root privilege. So even if an uh, uh, attacker has escaped from a port or gained uh, access to the Kubernetes API port or maybe the container disappeared, the attacker still can't gain the the privilege of the node because uh, it's inside the user name space. Uh, so user name space is uh, a feature of Linux kernel that must uh, known user to a uh, fake root user in the namespace. So the fake root user is uh, really similar to the root user, but the root privilege is limited inside the namespace. And in this namespace, uh, we execute Kubernetes, DRI, or the Ironta, and Sina at Triway. And Kubernetes and, and Kubernetes proxy in this namespace. So uh, we are inside the namespace, but uh, we can still use port forwarding. Uh, so we can use VX uh, run to create marginal cluster because a VX run uh, wraps every packet in a UDP packet, so it doesn't need the root privilege. And this is a history of user analysis. So I began the project in 2018. It's already five years ago. So actually, user analysis is as old as Rootless Docker and Rootless Potama. So Rootless Docker wasn't released until 2019, but the implementation itself uh, 
was almost done 2018. And uh, Unity is as old as uh, this project, but uh, Unity didn't gain much attention in the community so far because it's very complex. And Unity has uh, patches to Kubernetes, and the patches was merged in Kubernetes version 1.22. In 2021, uh, with a uh, feature named Subrex in user namespace. Uh, so this feature gauge uh, is a uh, slightly misnomer because we run every node component in the user namespace. And this feature gauge was also adopted by kind Kubernetes in Docker with rootless Docker provider or rootless Pateman provider. And feature gate is also available with Minikube with rootless Docker driver or rootless Pateman driver. And this is also adopted by k 3 but this is straight experimental. And all of these distributions only support single node cluster. So this was a uh, very far from production. So uh, generation two was uh, almost uh, written from scratch. So the generation one was using uh, the Kubernetes hardware, uh, so it's a uh, QC high tower script. Uh, it was uh, very complex and it didn't support Kube ADM. So creating Marshall cluster was uh, possible, but uh, practically impossible because of the complexity. So generation two was uh, modified to run in rootless Docker or rootless Postman or rootless NERD CTA. NERD CTA means continuous D CTA. Uh, it's a, a command line interface for continuous D. So this architecture is really near to kind and minikube. But unlike kind of thing, uh, user data supports real much of the cluster using big plan. So uh, this was a huge improvement from the generation one. But a lot of the robots is that it doesn't support post pass volume because the Kubernetes is running in a container. But uh, you can just uh, set up a uh, custom bind amount to support extra host pass volume. And this is uh, uses for user analysis. Uh, so uh, user analysis is uh, just composed for uh, make files. So you run make up to uh, bootstrap the first node and we'll make cube ADM init to init the first node and you can also install frontend inside it and you can run make cube config to make cube company for running cube CTA for post and you can create virtual cluster uh, with this one so you run make a join command and you get a file named join command and we can copy this file to another host of your XCP or whatever. And inside another host you run make up and make ADM join to create much of the cluster. And so here is a team cluster. So 
the cluster is Sorry, uh, this is uh, another. Uh, so this cluster has uh, two nodes and running some hooks like core DNS and GPPS server. And all of uh, these components are running as a Non root user, so you can see Cube API server and Kubelet and Jokadi, Continuity running as a non root user. Uh, so this is uh, my username, Suda. So this is just my name, and it doesn't, it, it, it has nothing to do with uh, the sudo command. So this is just a uh, Non-root user, and we are running every component as a non-root user. And uh, this is our uh, implementation. Uh, so uh, this is uh, just uh, implemented by using a uh, net file and Docker compose file. So we are just uh, depending on rootless Docker to run the node. Uh, so we have to have uh, some expression to node ports, the like base server and bridge. And we also have to uh, express this volume amount for like uh, root and deep module and for box and etc to uh, support host pass, pass mount. Yeah, and the base image is uh, actually based on kind image. And, but uh, we extend the kind image to install uh, Grandnet and as a plugin. Yeah, so uh, this, this should be uh, very easy to modify the configuration. Yeah. So uh, do you have uh, any questions? I don't have any questions. It looks pretty simple. Uh, um, this is great. I think. Uh... Thank you. Yeah, this will help um, secure Kubernetes environments uh, for users going forward. You know, by, by taking advantage of this and not be not needing to actually run the kubelet as a root user. <laughs> so I think a lot of a lot of a lot of the users don't see that this happens underneath, but I I think it's really helpful. You know, for security minded organizations and and users yeah thank you yeah i have one question so uh in this case like when you run privileged ports like how exactly will that be working i'm uh, sorry privileged what uh, uh we have option to run privileged ports in kubernetes right uh so you mean uh that uh post bureau one zero two four. No, not port. Uh, privileged port port. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you mean privileged port? Yes. Privileged yeah. Port. Yeah. So, uh, most of them, uh, should work, but uh, the root privilege is limited inside the namespace. Okay. Yeah. So. You can do uh, some operations like uh, install CNI plugin. Actually, uh, we are running uh, running as a uh, privileged port, so you can do uh, some some operations, but uh, you can't uh, do uh, extra operations like 
broadening kernel module or modifying firmware or modifying the post file system. So okay. you can you can do real uh, previous operations yeah. inside the namespace you can do okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right, any other questions? Akihiro, will you be at KubeCon or? Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I'll be there too as well. Yeah. Uh, we do have a tag runtime uh, project meeting on Monday, November 6th. Oh. So happy to have you stop by if you have time. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, where can I find the information? Uh, maybe uh, it's in the note. For that, uh, for that meeting, I can send you a, a Slack uh, message. Uh, that it's on the KubeCon website, but uh, right. I'll, I'll share it with you. But oh yeah, thank you, thank you. I, I would keep that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think uh, we can add the also to the notes and for folks to. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh, we have a, a comment from Hoover, um, uh, or Hoover, I don't know if I pronounced the name correctly, but um, uh, he just mentioned he's looking forward to contribute. Yeah, welcome, and yeah, happy to have you here, and uh, feel free to talk to us on on Slack, uh, on Tag Runtime channel, or just ping me if you have any questions, but yeah, happy to have you, and if you have any questions for for Akihiro, yeah, feel free to to send them a Slack message, or or you can ask them here if you have any. <laughs> I, I see, I see, I see a, a thumbs up. So. Uh, if uh, so, so Akihiro, so are there any um, uh, passage generation too? Are there any enhancements that you're looking at to to add to to this project? Like going for what? Uh, I guess my question is uh, on the roadmap and what are some of the things that. Yeah, uh, so we have a uh, GitHub issue to uh, discuss roadmap. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, we have to do refactoring that uh, we are currently working stable client or YAML, uh, but uh, we should be able to uh, remove the modifications to stable client by submitting a PR to. The front upstream. Yeah. Is there one to so I see there's uh, Calico. Uh, is there another one to support Cilium or somebody? Uh, uh, I don't think Cilium works because uh, loading EPPF needs uh, root privilege. Hmm. Yeah, and as I said, I programmed a uh, snatch earlier likely to work, but I think Calico also supports the extra. So I think Calico should work as well. And uh, actually there was a PR to support Calico, uh, but uh, the Calico PR uh, didn't work with uh, multiple nodes. So I didn't merge uh, this PR, but uh, I think, uh, yeah, this PR should, uh, should work with uh, some modification. So if somebody wants to uh, carry this PR, uh, please feel free to do it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, so so I guess Cilium needs uh, root privileges, so it might be a little bit more complicated for to support yeah. it. Yeah. 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 yeah okay. They might be interested in this. I mean, if they, if I mean, their uh, community might be interested in supporting um, to provide extra security. But you know, I guess it's just up to them and up to their roadmap. And yeah. yeah, so it might be a good idea to reach out to them if they're if they're interested. Yeah. 
they're, they're already a graduated project in the CNCF, and that's why I was mentioning. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? Last last minute questions. Okay. So, uh, thank you, Akihiro. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the. Uh, of yeah. a coupon and yeah and thank you all so yeah thank you yeah and uh yeah yeah and feel free to feel free to uh, send a message if you have any any comments or anything so happy to help uh, yeah uh, yeah so uh country usually is uh different or use number of ccp ip called uh sura pro and uh, this network is very through computer to the host network yeah, so we have uh, some experiment called bypass connection and uh, to improve the network performance. And this is not integrated to user yet, yeah, but uh, we should try to support the bypass connector in user Yeah, this is this is complex, but uh, yeah, we should be able to do this eventually. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you again. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.